Well, if you know me, I've taken a lot of photos, like probably over 100,000 photos over the last like seven plus years. I've also been very involved in the photography community on Instagram. I've worked with a ton of brands. Now with all these photos I've taken and posted and seen, here's what I feel truly separates the good photos from the bad photos or the just the not so good ones. And that's composition and framing. What's in subject? What's in focus? What are you wanting the viewer and the audience to look at? And and what story are you telling with that composition of your image? Now, my biggest rule of thumb is the thumbnail rule. You see what I did there? It's super cheesy. I guess I kind of made it up myself, but I just call it the thumbnail rule. I use this every single time I'm cropping a photo in Lightroom and I'm looking at the top left corner of Lightroom. If my eyes can understand what's happening in the photo at just the thumbnail level. So if you fully zoom out of any photo, if you can still understand what the subject is in that photo, what's happening happening in that photo, in my opinion, you've got a well-framed photo. This is just something that I've kind of taught myself to do over the years. And I think Instagram has played a part in this because when you're just going through someone's Instagram feed, you're looking at more or less thumbnails of their images. And that little kind of zoomed out perspective of their photos quickly makes your eyes gravitate towards the ones that you can understand and connect with more immediately. I think this is super important in this day and age with so much digital content out there, how you catch someone's eye. Like this has never been a more important topic to really understand and get a good grasp on. When you're out on location, ask yourself what in my environment is already providing a perfect framing to either place a subject or just take that photo. Some of those basic art rules, the rule of thirds, centering your subject, or at least having some leading lines definitely help a lot. But if your environment is messy and you can't quite separate the subject from that background, then some of those rules don't really matter a ton. Now, once I'm on location and I've found a good framing and I'm taking photos, I also still make sure to keep an open mind. I don't want to pigeonhole myself into that one angle and that one framed shot. It's okay to still try different angles, get in your camera, try different things and see what you like the best. Sometimes I take a bunch of photos of Allie in a bunch of different angles at one location and I get to my computer and the main angle I was shooting at turned out I didn't like it as much in the other different angles. I was like, oh yeah, this is so much better. Now with that in mind, if you know where you're going before you get there, you can have the model dress in specific colors that might contrast with the environment, making that subject pop out a bit more against a opposite colored background. Additionally, if your background is kind of busy, shoot a little bit lower and the sky can almost always make for a nice clean backdrop. If there's some clouds in the sky, it creates for a pretty decent framing and a pretty easy framing on your image. Additionally, when you're on location, use sidewalks, use roads. All of those leading lines can definitely help the viewer. If you really kind of think about that and think about those angles, it can really make a huge difference in how your audience receives that image. Another thing that I do that helps so much is that I hit info on my camera. Now with Canon, if I hit info while I'm looking at the screen, it's going to turn on and off the amount of settings and information that I'm seeing on the camera. Things like shutter speed, ISO, so all that stuff. When I already have my settings in place, I don't want to see any of that. I just want to see a blank screen of what the photo is going to look like when I take it. And this really helps me focus on the framing alone without all that other information. As helpful as that can be, it can also be very distracting when you're just trying to frame a solid shot. So whatever camera you shoot on, hopefully it's got that ability to turn off those settings and just shoot with just your screen. What's my ultimate tip for composing and framing a better shot. You probably guessed it. You need to shoot more. Get out and take more photos in different environments. Put yourself in random environments. Put yourself in unexpected environments and see if you can frame and compose a good shot. I think the ultimate goal to composing a good photo is getting the viewer to understand what's happening in your image in the smallest amount of time. If the viewer has to really look and stare and kind of dig through a bunch of digital information, a bunch of pixels to say, oh, okay, there's the subject in 
junk on my hands. I don't know what that is. And say, okay, there's the subject. I understand that. And, and this is what's in focus. If, if it takes them too long, they're going to get bored and they're going to move on to something else. Shoot a lot more. Before you know it, you're going to get much better at composing the right photo. And that's when the lensing becomes a really powerful tool. I personally like the 85 millimeter lens because even if you're in a location or an environment where none of the framing really is speaking to you, you throw on that 85 millimeter and you can really separate the subject from the background because of that nice bokeh and compression that the 85 gets. But that's more for portraits. If you're shooting a wider landscape, then obviously you're a lot more environment dependent on framing. So you got to go to more epic places. So there you go, friends, how to compose a better shot. I promise you this is going to up your photo game almost immediately if you take this advice and put it into practice like right now. So go grab your camera and get to shooting. If you learned something from this video, that would mean a lot to me if you hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. If you need good music for any of your video projects, check out moodsounddesign.com. 100% original music, all written for filmmakers, videographers. You know where to find it linked in the description. Well, that was fun. Let's do it again soon. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.